All right, example one. Solve negative x plus 3x squared plus 5 equals 0. Now, completing the square, the first step of completing the square is descending order equals 0. And as we can see, we don't have descending order because these two terms are backwards. So if I re rearrange it, 3x squared minus x plus 5 equals 0. <coughs> the second thing I want you to remember about completing the square is 1x squared is your best friend. All right, 1x squared, anything in front of x squared is a bad thing. So the fact there's a 3 in front of this x squared means I want to divide by 3 <coughs> every single thing by 3. Because again, I want 1x squared. I don't care if fractions show up. Fractions are not as terrible as numbers in front of x squared. Numbers in front of x squared cause completing the square completely to go haywire, and it just doesn't work very well. <coughs> so, the final thing, what's 0 over 3 equal? Zero. Yeah. 0, right? So the final thing, you want to move your constant to that side. You want your x's on one side, your numbers on the other, and you want to leave a little gap. So what my final result is before I actually complete the square is 1x squared minus, now I'm going to recommend this, instead of writing x over 3, 1 third x. I want to actually look at a number in front of x every single time. I don't want to have x over something. And then I'm going to move the 5 thirds over, and notice I'm leaving a space here, so negative 5 thirds. And be careful, one of the things that some of you messed up on before Christmas was when we moved that 5 thirds over, we forgot to change the sign. There's a lot of stuff going on, we got the division happening, we got the rearrangement of terms and everything, but again, if you're moving across the equal sign, that sign changes, don't forget to do that. All right? So that's kind of where we want to get every single time we use problems with completing square. That'll be our first checkpoint. Okay, so kind of a stop here, take a quick little breath, make sure everything looks right. 1x squared, I don't care what number x, gap equals I don't care what number. But again, that's what we're looking at every time, this structure every single time. Okay, once you get to this structure, now we're going to complete the square. Completing the square is a, a version of this. It comes out of that, all right? That's what I care about, and I don't even care about the sign, really. I care about the number, the one-third. All right. The rule of completing the square tells me I'm supposed to take exactly half of that number and square that product. That's the magic number that I need to add to both sides. And notice I use the word add, I'm going to add to both sides. It's always plus. Plus. And notice I'm going to put a space here, plus. All right. If I have a fraction, which I almost always have a fraction at this point, completing the square problems. For here. The way you take half a fraction is either you double the denominator or half the numerator. Take your pick. It's always times a half, right? Suppose it was 6 thirteenths, right? Notice I can take half of the numerator. Can I do that here? No, no so I'm going to double the denominator, all right? So what I'm getting from my magic number in this case, 1 sixth squared, all right? So again, 1 third came from right there. I always do times a half, and I always square it. That's what I always get for my complete the square. One sixth squared is what I'm adding to both sides. Be careful that one sixth squared is equal to one thirty six, not one twelve. I've seen people doing that too. Okay, we got a lot of steps in this process, and all of a sudden our arithmetic skills just go out the door, and we we come up with crazy rules and things. So. 1 sixth squared, 136. For me personally, that's what my work looks like. I don't do this here. Within my gap here, I take half the fraction, I square it. On this side, I actually square it. All right? Now, reason for the gap over here is I want a common denominator. This is 3, that's 36, so times 12, times 12. So negative 60 over 36 is the same as negative 5 thirds. So, checkpoint number two. We're going to stop here for a second, make sure everything looks good. What I should have over here is my perfect square trinomial, x squared, whatever number x, and then the magic number, which is exactly half of that squared, which I can verify that's what it is. And over here, I should be looking at two fractions of the common denominators I have to add together. All right, once I get to this point, now I go, go ahead and do my factoring and my adding. So. Over on this side, I'm looking for a binomial squared, so go ahead and create that structure. 
And what goes into this is three pieces. Let's use some colors here. So this and this and this all factor into this factored form. That's the three things I need to consider when I'm factoring that left-hand side. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 1 sixth squared is 1 sixth. These are both perfect squares. Just take the squares off of them. And then the only place where this sign matters is right here. Whatever sign that is is what goes in the middle of these two pieces. Okay. When you create a perfect square trinomial, that's how it factors. Short and easy, quick, easy to do it. All right. The right-hand side is whatever the, pro the sum of these two things is. I say the word sum, but add or subtract based on sign. These signs are different, so I subtract. And 60 is bigger than 1, so I'm going to go to negative. Again, completing the square, this will be checkpoint 3. Every time you do completing the square, you should get this step. It should look exactly like that. Object squared, a binomial usually squared, equals a number. All right? And again, the difference between what we're doing today and what we've done in the past is this number is negative. Up until now, it's always been positive. And let me just make one mention here when we're at checkpoint three. Never reduce this. Obviously, it doesn't reduce. 59 is prime. But if it did reduce, don't reduce it. Ever. Not even once. It's not a good idea. So, once you get done with checkpoint three and you verify everything looks good, now we just finish it up. It's a two-step process. Step one, you square root both sides. You square root the left, you get x minus one-sixth. You square root the right, you're going to get plus or minus. And notice the bottom is a perfect square, so the square root of 36 is 6. The top isn't a perfect square. Quite often it isn't a perfect square, but it is a negative. So I, because it's negative, and square root of 59. Again, the fact that there's a negative number on that side, when I take the square root, it requires me to have an i there, because again, square roots and negative numbers don't exist. All right? And our final step, what should happen, ideally, if you follow this, never reduce this rule, these should be the same denominator. Okay, based on how I created this, and the fact that the common denominators, it's just almost always that these have a common denominator. So just slide this 1 sixth over. And notice this negative 1 sixth when it moves over it becomes positive 1 sixth. Let me just go into a little detail about how I wrote the answer. If you have a complex answer, in other words there's an I attached to it, I want the real and the imaginary pieces split. So even though they have that common denominator, I don't want to make it into one fraction. Keep them separate. Real number plus or minus imaginary number. And I kind of like the I off to the side here. If you want to put it in front of the square root, that's fine. I just like the I off to the side. So I can see the imaginary part, I. Just make sure the square root doesn't go like way over the I. You know, like that. The square root of I being something different than I outside the square root. So that's kind of how I'd like the answer on those. Take your time, get good at it, and then find, find ways to speed yourself up. That's, that's the key to anything that's systematic like this in algebra. Take your time through the process, understand what every piece looks like, and then find ways to cut corners to speed yourself up.